Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with John Ray. How's it going, man? Good, man. Thanks for inviting me down here. We got it for you. This is Puzzle Games Hidden Gems. I love puzzle games. Oh, me too. We're just gonna jump right into it. Let's do it. All right, dude, I am so excited to finally do on my channel a proper puzzle games video. Now, in some of your other videos, you've had puzzle games in there. Yeah, yeah. Kind of scattered throughout here and there. But I was like, man, there's so many great puzzle games that aren't being mentioned. Yes. That we wanted to showcase today. And a lot of reasons I love puzzle games, too. Usually, like, 10 to 20 bucks off, brand new. Yeah. When they're in stores off of, uh, compared to AAA titles. Yep. And if done well, quite literally an unlimited amount of gameplay value there some of these <laughs> i've put many many hours in so this is gonna be cool all right we just jump right into it yep. we have to start it off we have to start it. i've been waiting to say it's mr pants okay i don't know what this now, is uh it is a game for the game boy advance it's from rare oh of all companies really? and it is a great great puzzle game i used to have it cib <laughs> Uh, my box and manual, there was the great Riggs flood of the basement of 2005. I lost all my boxes and manuals, man. Uh, but the game still lives on, and I'm so glad that it does. I thought you were joking about the title, but it's actually, it's Mr. Pants. It's Mr. Pants. Okay, and okay. it says that right when you boot up the screen. It says, some dude on the thing, it's like, it's Mr. Pants! <laughs> and um, it's from Rare. THQ is uh, doing it out. Uh, how it works is, mm, you have a playing field. It's going to be really hard to explain without showing you the footage, but it's going to be like <laughs> you have the playing field and there's four different colors to choose from. And you have to create the little blocks that fit together to create a perfect rectangle or parallelogram. Huh, okay. So when you have your piece that comes up next, you can put it on top of another color. Like, say you have a square, but there's a little piece sticking out. You can put the other color to block that off and then that square will disappear. Oh, okay. And you have to keep doing that for the pieces that show up and everything like that. What too. does that have to do with pants? doesn't matter. It's marketing. <laughs> it's marketing. Um, there are little like pairs of underwear and stuff like that that show up. That's uh, all I ask. Very cartoony, crayon colors and all that. Okay. So, just to tie the game together, I suppose. All right. But it's a really, really super fun puzzle game. And it's nice, too, because if you really get stuck after a while, a hint guy will pop up saying, hey, here's where to put that next piece. And then sometimes that starts the butterfly effect of saying, oh, I get it now. And I that's the best. Put all these pieces yeah. in place there. But that's what I'm telling you. Hmm. It's Mr. Pants. All I right. Couldn't I'm wait sold to, on pants. Couldn't wait to say that that one. Um, along the side of the Game Boy, we'll talk about Kirby's Star Stacker. Kirby game is a hidden gem. Nah. What? I can see the comments now. It's, I don't know how hidden it is, but it's probably not the most popular or common Kirby game anyway. I, to be honest, I hadn't heard of it. So. Okay, well, there you go. And, see. and I'm a Kirby fan, so I was having a hard time there. It didn't have to be Kirby. It could have been anyone. Okay. I think they put Kirby on it just to market it for Kirby. They did that with pinball. Remember? They do it for everything. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how it works is you have your Again, your playing field. It's always in a square. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, you want to get rid of the stars. So say you have, you know, you have to eliminate 56 stars in the level. And you're like, oh, that's a whole lot of stars. Um, you get rid of them by having two of the same, like, animal blocks. And if there's stars in the middle, say there's three stars in the middle, you have the same things, then all of those disappear. Huh. And then that's when you start getting the combos, because then you do that, then other pieces fall down and fill in the spots, and then those disappear. And then it's one of those games, like, as soon as you start one combo, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I just got 100 points. Yeah, out of nowhere, because all these stars f fall down, fill yeah. up the empty spaces and all that. Um, huh, that's th the best, though. The first couple levels of that, it actually kind of shows you how to play it. You're just like, hey, put this here, and you'll see what happens next. So the first few levels, you're like, I didn't feel like I did anything, and I'm already winning. <laughs> uh, but it, it gets harder as you move on, and more pieces, and it gets faster and all that, okay. too. So it's it's one I definitely recommend if you yeah, love puzzle games. I'll have to check it out. So love those, love those games there. Okay. Uh, we can evolve to, I showcased this in the NES Hidden Gems. I remember this. And we're bringing it back because yes. it's that good. Kickle Cubicle, you'll also notice if you compare this copy to the copy you saw in the original video, I did clean it up since then. It does look, a, yeah, it doesn't have food on it. It, does, it doesn't have the chocolate pudding or whatever it was <laughs> yeah. before. Um, fantastic game. Uh, my favorite puzzle game for the NES. Uh, you play as that character, Kickle, I suppose. Um, you freeze the enemy blocks, you kick them into the water, and that creates a platform or a bridge to get the magic bags or whatever. There's a storyline involved. You're trying saving a princess, what I guess. Story. A story. It's a puzzle game. <laughs> And it's 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 super super fun. You just you kick the blocks pengo style, and you can set up these little barricades to stop the enemies from getting over there. There's hammers that you have to like hit them, and then the hammer will spin a block, you know, send in another direction hmm. too. But it's a lot of fun. I, I like that one a lot. That's one game I can pick up and play anytime. And one of the few games my wife likes watching me play too. So whenever she's like, "Hey, you want to play Coco Cubicle?" I'm like, "Yep." 
You know, yes. since I just made fun of story in puzzle games, I yes. think we have to now go to Puzzle Quest. Now, <laughs> that looks like every other game I've ever seen in the App Store. However, there's a lot more going on involved with this one. Yes, because this one is a full-blown RPG. It's like 20 or 40 hours long. It has a story. <laughs> right. It has characters, dialogue. <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, there's drama and suspense. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. There's humor. There's everything in this game. <laughs> However, I this is the game that I played. This is one of the, the puzzle games I played the most. Mm -hmm. I have played and beat this on the PSP, the DS. I played right. it on, I think, the Xbox 360. It is so good because it's it's match three, right? But it has this full blown RPG element to it, where you level up your characters, yeah, you get insane. spells. There's armor. It's amazing. Yeah, one of my friends turned me on to that game, and he was like, "Dude," and he lived he lived somewhere else, so he sent me the link and everything. He's like, "You're gonna love this game, Puzzle Quest, right up your alley." Here's a link to it. Check it out. I was, and I. Was I was like, you sent me the wrong link. You sent me something to like Candy Crush or something like that. He's like, no, 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 that's the right link. Right, right. You have to play this game. And I was like, benefit of the doubt, I checked it out and I couldn't put it down for like all weekend. It's an absolute classic. And the only thing I would say is that uh, unfortunately they did not follow this up with like a good sequel in my opinion. They did right. uh, Puzzle Quest 2, which is okay. Then they did like this Galactics thing, which was kind of <laughs> weird. Sure. This, the original is the absolute best. It's still cool. fun to play today. So probably PSP is probably the best one. There was one for DS also. And it's on the, mobile and everything yeah, else. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But, yeah, Puzzle Quest, I think you'll be all right. Love it. Uh, we can go, hey, let's do another mobile game, too. This is for the Nintendo DS. This is Meteos Disney Magic. This comes up a lot, actually. People love this game. Um, it takes place in the realm of Disney. And again, Disney has nothing really to do with it. It could be anything, really. Mm. Um, but it ties everything together. Uh, what you do want to do, it's a, one of those match three games. Right. You match three, but then those pieces start flying through the top of the screen and then slowly creep back down, depending on what the level is. And then as it's floating back down, you have to grab the other pieces that are on that and then connect those three to create another combo to boost it up huh. off the screen. And you're trying to make the pieces go off the screen and each level has like, you know, one of them is, uh, you know, clear a hundred pieces or one of them is clear 50 of a specific, just this piece. And each piece usually is an icon or something based on whatever movie happens to be in, whether it be Toy Story or Lion King, or there's like Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Or night, yeah, Nightmare Before <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. If Disney buys Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> I'll be watching the weather forecast for flying pigs. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a super fun game in each level like each um like each movie i suppose each franchise that it's based on um has a different gimmick to it too like for the little mermaid the pieces fall really slow like the extra pieces huh. but they there's a ton of them that fall all at the same time so you got to be really quick on it oh so it requires different strategies it does yeah okay. uh the nightmare before christmas one um the pieces don't fly up at all they just stay locked in place until you get like three combos or whatever and then they just disappear all at once too oh. so um it's one i think you should uh, definitely check out we have for the PC Engine, okay. this is the Japanese TurboGrafx-16, so we're gonna go import this time around, but there's a way you can play it in American, I'll talk about that in a second. This game is called Volfide. There's, Volfide. there's the Who card for it. Um, it plays like Kix, spelled Q-I-X. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, you have to like, draw the area, you have to get like 75% of the area filled without crashing into the enemies or anything like that. This one takes it to the next level where there is more bosses, more enemies, there's blocks and stuff in the way. However, you can, um, if you trace around your block, there might be a power-up. So the power-ups would be like zappers or lasers or you can freeze time or something like that. It's, oh. It would be like going from Super Breakout to Arkanoid. Same premise, but there's a whole lot more going Which on. Just more, more, more. Okay. That one's Volfied. Um, I love the Kick series. Uh, this is like that. It still has the science fiction element to it. Um, the bosses are really cool. And if you can't play that one because you don't have a PC engine or something like that, uh, you, it is available on the Taito Legends for the PlayStation 2 oh. as one of the uh, games you can play on there. So check that out. If I'm allowed one magic trick, all right. Where'd it go? I don't know. <laughs> Not on the floor. Uh, keeping up with the imports, this is called Irritating Stick is basically what it's called. It's available for multiple platforms. Why do I... This sounds familiar. It is the... Uh, you have the weird copper wire line and you have to bring your ring through it without buzzing the edges. Oh, I play these kind of games where they're so much fun. They're hard as heck. They're, they're even harder when you're trying to play it on a Nintendo 64 with a third party analog controller. Okay, <laughs> wow. But it is, a, it is a super fun party game. Um, this one is an import for the 64. They have it available for other things too. Hmm. Um, but I would consider it a puzzle game just because it has that element of you gotta stay focused. Yeah. Wow, cool. <laughs> uh, we'll go, I will have no more of your Sophomoric humor kind, sir. All right. Giggling and all that. Yes. This is a very serious video. I'm prepared. This is called Spanky's Quest, <laughs> where you play as a monkey. 
They did that on purpose. <laughs> a spanking monkey. No, yeah, well, I don't know if he's spanking. I don't know. Um, despite the cartoony label, the animated graphics, the bright colors and all that, it's a very, very fun puzzle game. You play as Spanky the monkey, I guess? Hmm. Um, and you blow these uh, bubbles, I suppose. And that's what kills the enemies. However, the more you pop the bubble on your head, like if you just throw it and you hit the button, the bubble turns into a baseball. Kills the enemy. How the how do you find this game? I rented it. I was during you, were, you rented it and it said Spankies. You're like that sounds like a great game. I rented everything that our local video store had to offer. Ah, uh, well. Everything from Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom to uh, Spice Girls for the PlayStation One. I rented everything, especially when I worked at a video store. It's all free. What do I care. Right. Um, <laughs> however, it's a super super fun game. It has a challenge too. And then when you bump the the uh, ball on your head, the the balloon on your head, uh, then it uh, changes balls. So like just by itself as a baseball. Um, that it has the shmup mechanics kind of like where it's like the next evolution is like I think it's like a volleyball, but it creates like a line. So if enemies walk into it, they'll die huh. um, So it gives you a few uh, added elements in that too And it's just that you, you have your room um, You collect all the keys and you go out through the door and you collect the keys by uh, killing these enemies and grabbing their keys Man, I've never heard of this before. That Spanky's awesome. Quest. Yeah, yeah for the Super Nintendo. It's um now I'm now I'm looking for it <laughs> Yeah, um, and then I have uh, one more here is it puzzle? I consider it puzzle, but it's another one of those games that, man, I really wanted to showcase on this channel. I don't know if there's ever an opportunity. Okay. But it's an action puzzle game, and I'll tell you why I think so. And this is Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo, and I love Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo. Huh. Um, tell me about it. It's like, it would be like if Legend of Zelda existed without all that needless fighting. It's just the realms of rooms of, you have so many items you can pick up. You can pick up a grappling hook, you can pick up a shovel, you can pick up a couple of other things, but you can't carry them all at once. So you have to say, okay, now I have to use the grappling hook on this thing, and you can oh, still pick up, interesting. you can pick up pots and throw them at the enemies, and that's kind of how you kill them. Well, that's very much like a, like a traditional PC adventure game, right? Where you have a bunch of items, you're trying to ma mix and match, you can only carry so much, right? Yeah, and you have to you know, you have backtrack all the way over yeah. here, and you have to kill these guys to open up this door to unlock through the thing, so um, I would call it an action puzzle game. So since this is a puzzle game's hidden gems, well, I'll give I'll give the honorable shout out to uh, Disney's Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo. Wow, interesting. All right, all right and the last one for me is, uh, it's online only or oh. it's digital only i know <laughs> yeah. can't uh, showcase it. but i've played it so many times okay. i've played and beat it a couple different times so has my wife it is called treasures of montezuma oh and it's basically it's a match three so it's it's like so many others that you see out there where uh you know you match three you match four match five depending okay. on how many you match how many big combos you get right however it has one feature that all of them don't have they've ever found and as you can do it doesn't stop whenever you match so for instance oh. so so if you match three it gives you a little bit of time to also match another one and, oh. another, one, and another one wow so you can do screen clearing combos <laughs> yeah, no kidding. and you get addicted to it <laughs> and it, it seems like it's a small thing but once right. you kind of figure that out it's awesome right oh man and that'd be fun it is really fun and th the other thing it does is it's very much like puzzle quest where you also level up so you get also different kind of uh, uh elemental attacks mm -hmm. so for instance depending on the color of the gem it may do like a, a yellow kind of attack that does like say lightning or something like okay, that. okay sure yeah um oh fun oh my god i played it so <laughs> many times and it's my favorite match three all right it, it, even more than puzzle quest i hate to say it but it is oh, actually true <laughs> that's the best one huh it is it oh, is man. it's awesome all right we have, for the Sega CD, hmm. I wish I had the boxing manual for that and all that, but I have the disc, and it is called Panic. With an exclamation point. With an exclamation point for the Sega CD. You can look at the disc, I suppose, if you yeah. like. Nothing really so fancy shiny. there. Uh, what Panic is, is um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience. It's all animated. Um, very heavily influenced by like Monty Python. Um, really? The animation, like there's the cartoony animation, and then there's also like they'll use like the Mona Lisa or they'll use like the Thinker as part of the rooms. And what it is is you find a remote control, you hit the button, and now you're in the TV. You're you're you play as a small boy and his dog. Hmm. And then each room is there'll be a room with say uh, the Mona Lisa, for instance, and that's one of the rooms on there. And you're trying to find your way out, <laughs> and your the buttons will either send you to another room. It'll destroy some national monument. Like it'll go to like kind of like a screenshot of the thing and then crumble down. Um, it'll give you some weird animation that with like dialogue, um, or it'll do something funny to the Mona Lisa. So one of the Mona Lisa animations will like be like she'll be like, standing there and then she'll turn into Medusa and then turn into stone, and then you'll be frozen and then I'll just kind of. This sounds awesome. It's really really cool. <laughs> and the fun part is you don't die. I mean, there's there's a couple of dead ends, but you don't really die on it. Um, I mean, so you just keep on going from room to room to room to find out like what you're gonna do next. You're sitting on the couch huh. with the remote control, 
and you hit the button and all of a sudden your room turns into a jungle and then a lion jumps through and you're like, that was weird. And then it goes back into the room and you hit another button and then so you're underwater and then a dolphin swims through. That's that's weird. And you hit another button and then you go to the next is room. Is there any skill involved or there's no the only skill is if you played it before and you know what button goes where. Oh, okay. Um really, really, really fun. It was the first game that my daughter ever beat. But she was really apprehensive about playing video games at first because you die. Ah. But you don't only really die in this. You just move on to the next room or have fun or silly things happen. Um it was also the first game that my son learned how to use a D-pad. Because I'll give him a controller and he tried to use the controller like a mouse. <laughs> Um, and then when I showed him what to do, because there's no dying in it, so this is, he doesn't play video games, but I have a son who will only play that game, and he calls it, um, more boy in his dog video game. Really? <laughs> so, so, panic funny. for the Sega CD. Um, even if you don't find it, at least look up, like, gameplay footage of it, because that's just as good, man. But it's really, really fun. You should check it out. All right, dude. So many hidden gems oh, I didn't yeah. know about. This is awesome. That's so. That, this is only barely scratching the surface of the tin can here. There's so many out there. I know. So uh, they, they make them all the time, and you yeah. know, and they still do. I mean, there's. I mean, they just released uh, the Tetris Puyo game for the oh, Switch. That's right. So there, yeah, there is no reason why puzzle games can't stop continuing from here on out. <laughs> this is only a small portion of them, though. Yeah. We'd love to know down in the comments what are some of the hidden gems, the puzzle game hidden gems yeah. out there that we didn't cover. We didn't cover anything from the PlayStation One. Didn't cover. Uh, we didn't cover any of the Tetris games, and there's like a thousand of those. That's true. So, I what know. are some of the best Tetris games? <laughs> I'm still looking. Yeah, <laughs> dude, where can people find you on the web? Uh, you can find me at John Blue Riggs, uh, Twitter, Instagram. It's my PlayStation Network name. If you want to play some game together or something like that, giving out your PlayStation Network name, people. I don't mind. It's it's the same as my Twitter name and all that. So it's it's going to be one of the same. And I have a YouTube channel as well if you want to learn how to um, hack yourself into your favorite Nintendo game and put that on a cartridge for some reason, uh, you can do that. And how to fix video games, because you shouldn't... This game used to not work. This was actually donated to my channel. Oh. It's a Goof Troop game, and um, I fixed it up. Now it works, and now I have it back in my collection, so you're awesome. Yeah, very but cool channel. How you can fix out. your own games, too. <laughs> awesome. All right, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and take care. I had a really hard time wrapping my head around trying to figure out that Disney Medios game. For that particular one, I captured the gameplay footage in this video and man, it was just confusing me. Like I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to be doing. I mean, eventually I kind of got the hang of it, but if you watch that footage closely, you'll see just how badly I suck. <laughs> but I love this video because there's so many cool games I'd never heard about and hadn't played before. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.